Hello students, in this video we'll see how the weak law of large numbers can be used to prove the Weierstrass approximation theorem. So let's suppose that F maps 0, 1 into R is continuous. There's a sequence Bn of x, Bn, mapping 0, 1 into R, where Bn are polynomials. Oh. of degree n, and Bn converges to F uniformly. on 0, 1. And of course, what does that mean? The uniform convergence, of course, means that if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, namely the limit as n goes to infinity of the supremum over all x in 0, 1 of the absolute value of bn of x minus f of x, this supremum is equal to 0, okay? And so the proof of this follows from a classic idea in probability theory. And so I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to let x1, x2, etc., xn, be iid, be independent Bernoulli trials with the probability of success being p. Then let me compute the expected value, the expected value of f of x1 plus all the way down to xn over n, the average value of these things. Well, what's this going to be? This is going to be the sum. k goes from 0 up to n. Of what? Of f of k over n. Well, how could these random variables sum up to be k? Well, there's n choose k ways of those things of probability of success being p and probability of failure being n minus p, right? So in other words, I get a 1, I would need a 1 how many times? I would need a k 1s and I would need n minus k 0s and how many ways are there to do that? There's exactly from n of these random variables, choose exactly k of them to be equal to 1. So this is what the random sum is. Now this is a polynomial in p, so this function over here, this is really what? I'm going to call this thing over here, this is a polynomial of degree n in the p variable, okay? So I'm going to treat p as my function value over here. So what can we do? So I can let epsilon be greater than 0. So let's do that. So let's let epsilon be greater than 0. And then I can choose delta such that f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon over 2 if x minus y is less than delta. This follows from uniform continuity of the function on the interval, right? So I'm just using uniform continuity over here. Uniform continuity. Great. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate the difference in f of x and this function bn of, well, let's use the p variable since having p successes over here. So now let's consider the difference of f of p and bn of p, where what's my bn? My bn is exactly just this expected value here. I'm going to call this thing bn of p. For these, these things are all, as I mentioned, alluded to earlier, these are called Bernstein polynomials. It's called a Bernstein polynomial. Okay, excellent. Okay. Well, what can I do? So, of course, this is a probability measure, so I can put that into the sum over here. So, this is exactly equal to the sum. k goes from 0 up to n of just the difference of f of p and f of k over n. And then I'm going to have an n choose k. And I, of course, here I'm using the fact that this is a probability distribution, so this sum adds up to 1 over here. And that's going to be an n minus k over here, n minus k. 
N minus K. Excellent. And so now I'm going to write this sum of this two parts, right? I'm going to sum over those values of P. So I'm going to sum over P minus N over K less than delta. And then I'm going to sum over what? I'm going to sum over P minus N over K. K bigger than or equal to delta. So there's two things that can happen. Either P minus N over K is less than delta, or P minus N over K is bigger than delta. Okay, so I'm gonna call these things two sums over here. So this is the first sum is I, and the second sum is two, okay? So what happens now? On I, I can control everything by what? The difference, of course, absolute value everywhere over here, right, absolute value. So the difference between F of P and F K over N is what? Is less than delta on this first sum over here. So that's less than epsilon over two times the probability distribution. So on I, I is less than epsilon over two by what? By the uniform continuity. Okay, beautiful. That's less than epsilon over two. And now, how can I estimate this second sum over here? So by the weak law of large numbers, by weak law of large numbers, The second sum over here is less than or equal to, two is less than or equal to twice the L infinity norm, the maximum of the function f. I can pull the max, because I just estimate this by the maximum that f can be on the interval zero, one, the max that that can be on the interval zero, one. Then what's left over over here is just simply the probability that these random variables over here exceed what? Exceed delta, right? And so by the weak law of large numbers, that's less than the variance over the, of those things over here, which is going to be an n times p, 1 minus p over 1 plus p, over the square of this difference over here. So I'm going to have a delta, delta squared, and then n squared. Okay? That's by the weak law of large numbers. Up top over here, I have the variance, right? And so that basically just follows from the weak law of large numbers. The variance of the random of these of these trials over here. And then what? And then delta squared, the parameter that you're bigger than, and then n squared. So this thing over here looks like what? Number two is comparable to what? Is comparable to a constant times one over n. So this is a constant times one over n. And we can make that what? So I can make two what? So two can be made less than epsilon over two if n is large enough, if n is bigger than or equal to n capital. So what I've just shown over here is I've just shown that this difference over here can be made less than epsilon if n is bigger than or equal to n capital, and that's true for any p in the interval, so that's true for, in particular for the supremum. So I've just shown that the sequence bn of p converges uniformly to f of p as n goes to infinity. Thank you very much.